Now we come to reflect upon God's word. And as we prepare to do so, let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we are amazed to be able to read your word, to have some understanding of it. But Lord, we ask for your understanding to be ours. Lord, guide us in your truth and let what we share now in reflection upon your word be honor, honoring and glorifying to you and you alone. This in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus was going to die. I think in all our great desire to preserve life and keep it, this reality that Jesus had already accepted that he was going to die. He was going to die a terrible and horrible and painful death, and he knew this already, and yet he persevered. It's the obvious difficulty in the midst of all that which, of what Jesus was telling his disciples and teaching his disciples. I mean, they were ready for the honor and glory and power and majesty of God. But the humility that Jesus was going to manifest, the very perfect humility that we always seem to fail on, he was going to embody and fulfill and bring to reality as a human reality. And in that, he would lead the way to our salvation. That our salvation is not by conquest. That our salvation is not by, by mental exercise. That our salvation is not by following a bunch of rules. But our salvation is in putting to death, death, putting to death sin and sinning no more. And it starts for, certainly for the disciples in their encountering of this teaching of Jesus, finding a way to accept God's understanding in Jesus Christ of our mortal condition. It's powerful to say, yeah, there's death, but death won't define me. And in the same right of saying that death won't be my definition, we're saying that sin will not be our definition. And to get from not having death define us to not having sin define us is a place that on our own we continually fail to go. It is only in Christ that we are able to reconcile death and sin and still persevere unto life and life everlasting. It is only through Christ for there to be meaning in, in the face of death that the, the ultimate corruption that is sin's final act in death can be overcome, not because of what we do, but because of what we have accepted that Christ has done on our behalf for our sakes in our place and thus opening the door for us to be in his place, to be welcomed and to be received. So Jesus teaches his disciples about some grain. Um, earlier in the children's story, we celebrated that Patrick looked around and how do I have any, where do I have an example in order to teach the, the reality of God, teach the, the nature of God, teach the acceptance of who God says God is that is manifested in, 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 in my midst. Where's, where's the metaphor I can turn to? Where is the physical example? And he reaches down, and, and Patrick picked up a, 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 a trefle, a, a clover, a three-leaf clover. Set aside the four-leaf clover thing and all those other uh, folklore stuff about Ireland. And focus in on the teaching. He saw a leaf that was one leaf, one plant, but it was three leaves. And profoundly three leaves, everywhere three leaves. And he said, this is the example that God gives us of who God is. See, there's, there's three, but there, it's one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one. Jesus trying to explain the, the reality, the, the necessity 
of his death to his disciples who were not accepting his teaching on this. They were really struggling with this. Peter went so far as to say, you know, no, Lord, there's no way. And Jesus had to reprimand Simon Peter in this. But Jesus looks down and there's some wheat. Everybody sees wheat. Everybody knows what wheat is. Everybody knows how wheat is planted. You take the grain, you put it in the ground, and in the ground it falls apart. It breaks open. The sprout comes out, and a new plant is formed. And from that new plant, 50 grains, and sometimes more, manifest at the end of that stem and then they fall to the ground and more is produced and and more and more and so from a handful of grain you have a field of grain from what would make a loaf of bread you have enough bread to feed a village a town a countryside so Jesus explains that it is necessary for that one kernel to die that all the others may grow and be and fulfill their purpose. That they may have a fullness of life. But the grain has to die. Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord, the Messiah, the Christ. These titles are not just honorifics. Titles given as we do to those who would be called our royalty and people use them to lord over others we have other titles boss we have other titles uh president prime minister we have other titles general admiral they're titles they're not ultimately defining they are not completely filled but in christ jesus all the titles placed upon him they are fulfilled they are real you and i can try to be king queen teacher lawyer minister and as good as we are we only really get it to the edge of pretending but jesus is all those titles that he proclaims and more and in the same way even though he has died he is alive and he lives and he takes all of the things that we would use to define ourselves and he makes them more real for us in him than we can in ourselves and even though we make the claim that we're alive we're mortal we're failing our bodies are dying jesus is the source of all living and if we want eternal life we turn our our attention to him for even though he died he rose. He rose like the blade of grass. He rose to not just make new life for himself, but to raise all. So the lesson of the grain field is very appropriate. Our sin casts us away from that life. Our sin is the corruption that rots our grain away from being alive. We are, and, and the more we cling to who we think we are over who God tells us we are we abide in that corruption we become less and less whole less and less able to to have life or sustain life or to offer life unto others it is only through our dependence on Christ and his example in following his way and doing what he has done in taking up our cross and following him maybe not to the same kind of suffering and death but through whatever journey God has placed before us and if we honor Christ in this way, if we honor him, we become as those as the prophet celebrated would, would come about as Jeremiah, Jeremiah declared in the vision of the Lord that the days are coming when in Christ, in this new covenant we have in Christ, we, we are able to say to one another, because his law is, is not in some book somewhere alone, but is in all of our hearts. That God is our God and we are God's people. And even though St. Patrick went through all Ireland telling people, know the Lord, and maybe you and I, by these means, uh, my, myself to the whole world and through however long this 
digital uh, record keeps, I will say, know the Lord. But all we pray, the goal of all of this is that everyone will know the Lord from the least to the greatest. For God has forgiven our wickedness. God remembers our sins no more. And so we are drawn away from all that is death into all that is life. By God, for God's grace and glory is true and everlasting. God bless and keep you.